Hey, literature. I thought I would show you my close reading of the first section in Letter from Birmingham Jail. If you haven't already, please go back and watch the introduction video. It had some historical background and some images to help you understand what was going on when Martin Luther King Jr. wrote this letter, literally from Birmingham Jail. We often think of MLK as a great speaker, but we rarely think about him as a great writer. And this piece was actually never delivered as a speech. It was published in a newspaper and it was sent out to these clergymen, but um, his, his writing is so powerful. And I think this is one of the most important texts that we read in class. I'm sorry that we can't be together to read it, but I hope that you can really sink into um, some of his really great writing. So starting right here at the beginning, Remember, he's writing to a group of clergymen, and a clergyman is essentially just uh, like a pastor or a priest. Okay? He's responding to a letter that they wrote, and these clergymen wrote to him. There's a group of white clergymen, and they wrote to him, and they said, MLK, we support you, and we believe that racial inequality, racial injustice, racial segregation, we agree. It's wrong. We shouldn't have this in our society but maybe we should slow down, they said. Maybe we should wait a little bit on some of the protests that we're leading. So yes, of course we want everyone to be equal, but we think things are getting maybe a little out of hand. Now, of course, this letter is Martin Luther King Jr.'s reaction to their letter, so he's writing back to them, and he's saying, you are right. We need, to, we need racial equality, but we need it now. So he says, we are not going to wait. We are not going to stop protesting. We are not going to stop standing up for ourselves. So he agrees with them. Racial equality is important. But the point that he's disagreeing on and trying to persuade them of is that we need to keep moving. So keep in mind, he's writing to this group of pastors and priests, but he also had this letter published in a newspaper. So he wanted it to be public. He wanted a lot of people to see it and to better understand his cause for the civil rights movement. So let's keep going. My dear fellow pastors and priests, remember Martin Luther King Jr. was also a pastor. I am in Birmingham, which is in Alabama, right? Because injustice is here. I'm cognizant of the interrelatedness of all communities and states. I cannot sit by idly by in Atlanta and not be concerned about what happens in Birmingham. So if you know about Martin Luther King Jr., you know that he was from Atlanta, Georgia, and now he's completely in a different city, right? Now he's in Birmingham, Alabama, and he went there because he knows that things are bad. There's injustice, right? Here I am in a different city because there are unjust things that are happening. Let's look at this sentence. He says, I am cognizant, and if you need to look up a word for close reading, that's important, but cognizant means aware. So he says, I am aware of the interrelatedness. And re interrelatedness really just means the connection. The relatedness could be almost the same word. So he says, I am aware that we are all connected. So think about this. Uh, imagine something is going on at a school in Becker or Big Lake or Buffalo, any of our surrounding communities. This is like us here at Monticello saying, it doesn't just affect me in Monticello or sorry, excuse me, it doesn't just affect you in Buffalo, Big Lake, uh, Becker, it affects me as well. And some issues that maybe are in the surrounding area could kind of seep into our community too. So he's saying just because it's taking place outside of my state, outside of my town, that doesn't mean I shouldn't be worried about it, right? I can't sit idly or lazily in my home and not be concerned about other people. Let's keep going. He says, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Again, what if there's injustice somewhere in the world that might threaten our justice? He says, now we are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. Let's look up the definition for that word mutuality. I kind of have an idea, but I like to see what Google has to say every now and again. Mutuality, shared feeling or relationship. 
So he says, we are all tied together. We all have a shared feeling and a shared relationship tied in a single garment. Now a garment is like a piece of clothing. And if you know anything about how cloth is made, you know that threads are woven together. And if you know what a weave uh, looks like, if you pull on one of those threads, it's going to affect all of the other threads, right? They all bunch up. If you've ever pulled a thread in jeans or in a sweater, it's really gonna mess up the rest of that garment. So he's saying like the clothing of destiny, if one thread, if one person gets pulled, the rest of us are going to be affected as well. And that's exactly what he says here. Whatever affects one person directly affects everybody, even if it's indirectly. Now in our last piece, I told you to highlight where you see uh, examples of those three parts of civil disobedience, right? Fighting for a just cause, um, taking accepting consequences for our actions and not harming people or property. And I suppose here, what we're looking for is that just cause. So he's fighting for justice for everyone, right? For racial equality. Um, I liked a lot of sentences in here. I find it hard not to just highlight everything, but I would certainly highlight injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Um, I like the simplicity of that. He's talking about justice, which would be our just or righteous or holy cause. And I also like this because he's explaining why he's in a different place. Now for my summary, in my own words, I'm going to take a look at what I highlighted and what I've learned from my section and then write it in my own words in modern language. So here's my summary. Uh, I'm in Birmingham. Birmingham, I can spell. <laughs> Because it's needed. Whatever affects one person, affects. that's all. There we go. Keep it simple. If you can do one sentence, that's fine. I kind of wanted two for mine. But again, a summary should be in your own words in modern language. And it should be very simplified based on what our author has said. Hopefully the language in this is a little bit easier for you to understand than civil disobedience. As we can see, the date is obviously much more modern. We're in the 1960s now. Um, so continue doing your close reading by looking up words you don't know and defining them by highlighting an important phrase, maybe one that relates to one of the three tenets or characteristics of civil disobedience, and then write in your summaries right here at the bottom.